Tanya. Congratulations. You're about to go up. How do you feel? Congratulations, Donald. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, Lester will be Skyped in. And you want to recognize this. And today's this award, or presents this award to a woman who, for recognition and leadership. And this is so vital and so important. I want to share with you some of the past recipients of this award. We've had Mary Lynn Maythre, and we, in 2004, Debbie Goldsberry in 2005, yeah. And we've had Mickey Norris, Cannington Stewart, one of my personal heroes. Yes, she's a mentor to so many people. She's inspirational, and that's what this is about, inspiring other women. In 2007, I was myself who won the award. Mary Chin Holcomb, uh, I'm sorry, Allison Chin Holcomb from Washington, the ACLU. She is an ass kicker out there. She doesn't take anything. She fights for our rights. She stands up to anybody and everybody. She actually came into Oregon and fought to stop the DEA from subpoenaing patients' records. And you know what? The DOJ from our state stood up and fought for our rights and did not let them take one single page. And I have to mention that Paul Stanford and the TAP clinic in Oregon stood their ground along with the ACLU, and we won, and they didn't take anything from us. So, I'm really excited. Uh, and tonight, the Paul E. Stanford Award for Women Leadership, you know, is going to someone who's been in the movement for about five years, She's a patient with multiple medical conditions. She is a mom and grandmother of one. She's very excited about that baby. And um, she has been working with the Ohio Patients Network and Ohio Normal, and working tirelessly and fighting for patients' rights. She came from somewhere, she was just a little quiet mom who had these medical conditions, and when she saw how patients were not allowed to use their medicine, and how she had a voice and could be heard everywhere if she just took a little while and fought for her rights. And I'm just so pleased to present this award to Tanya Davis. In Ohio, there's nobody who personifies medical marijuana law, mar medical marijuana law reform more than Tanya. She will go anywhere. She will crawl on broken glass. We are blessed to have her here. Thank you, Tanya. And I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. Let me get turned around here because I have to recognize the table. Sorry. My heart's beating a million miles a minute because I really didn't expect this. I just found out about a week and a half ago that this was happening. So I'm real shocked that I finally have a voice. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about me so you know where I've been, so you know why I'm here and where I'm at now. I am a domestic violence survivor. I got beat so badly I have domestic violence and do scoliosis. I have a crippling terminal disease called pseudo-hypoparathyroidism. Now this disease basically means that my thyroid and my parathyroid work, but my body doesn't know it. So I just pee out any nutrients that I need to survive. I have inflamed bowel disease with adhesions wrapped around my bowel. Because of all my other conditions, I've got severe cri cri crippling arthritis. So I have a lot of pain issues. There's a lot going on with my body. I was anti-anything for many years. I had to search out 
the safest medicine for me. And thank God for medical cannabis. I have never had a voice until I got into this movement. I couldn't speak until I was five years old. Uh, anytime I screamed at the top of my lungs for someone to help me, I fell through the cracks. I searched out folks just like you, and I've made a lot of dear friends here. And I love you all so much. You all, I learned from you. This award is not just my award. This award is Ohio's award. Because it takes people like you to make it happen. Cher Newford, Thomas Woo! Neil, Jeremy, Ohio Normal, Cleveland Normal, and I, and, and me and about five others are just starting Miami Valley Normal. It's going to cover from Cincinnati to date. And I think it's the time, don't you agree? Yeah. I think, I think the Obama administration is in place with uh, the former Seattle police chief and with the uh, uh, other former police chief. Uh, Stan? Stanford? Yeah, Stanford. Um, I mean this. This is because of you. Because you give me the courage to open my mouth. And I'd be damned if they're going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> You know, I fell through the cracks up until 2000. Well, 1996 was the last time I've been ever abused. And I went through the, the era where kids were to be seen, not hurt. Women were to keep their mouths shut and let the man run everything. Well, don't you agree? It's, it, I'm glad it's changed. Because we need more women. We need more African Americans. I went down to uh, the NAACP conference this last year in my prison suit, in my wheelchair. They were down in Cincinnati, Ohio. That's where I landed Dr. Richard Wydersky, a uh, internal medicine geriatrics doctor. You know, at first it was a shock factor, this little white girl in a prison suit in a wheelchair with a big sign saying, stop arresting medical marijuana patients. That, me that message opened up their eyes. You know, and it was funny because the, um, the, the uppity, very professional women, African-American, powerful women, the ones that kind of looked shocked at me, we're hugging my neck by the middle of the week. Okay, they realize that it's just common sense to do what's right. And if we all just do what's right, this war will be over. Especially on the second dime. I'm sorry I'm babbling, but my heart is in the right place, I promise. <laughs>